In this video, we are going to look at descriptive statistics. Descriptive statistics or summary statistics are a collection of measurements of two things, location and variability. Location tells you the central value. Mean is the most common measure of this. Variability refers to the spread of the data from the central value. This could include variance and standard deviation. The first statistics we are going to look at is mean. Mean is the sum of the observations divided by the total number of observations. It is the central tendency of the data. Standard error. Standard error indicates how close the sample is from the true population. Standard error can be used to roughly define a range of certainty for the mean. By subtracting the product of standard error and z-value from the mean, a z-score of 1.96 means 95% certainty. A z-score of 0.99 means a certainty of 68%. Sample variance measures the dispersion of data from the mean. Standard deviation is a widely used measurement of variability again. It shows how much variation or dispersion there is from the average. A useful property of standard deviation is that, unlike variance, it is expressed in the same units as the data. Skewness. Skewness measures the asymmetry of the data. It is a rough test of normality. Finally, kurtosis. Kurtosis measures the peak of the distribution. It is also an indicator of normality. So now let's look at an example to understand all these statistics. Let's say we want to analyze the student data which consists of age, SAT scores, student height, and newspaper readership. We want to be able to determine what is the average, minimum, maximum age, how well dispersed the data is, is it symmetrical or positively or negatively skewed, is it normally distributed? In order to do that, we need to have data analysis tool path. So let's go to the file menu. Click on options. On the left hand side, you'll have various choices. Click on add-ins. If your data analysis tool pack is already activated, then it would appear under active application add-ins. If it is not activated, then it would appear under inactive application add-ins. Go ahead and click on Analysis Tool Pack. Under Manage, ensure that Excel add-ins is selected. Then go ahead and click on Go. Another window will appear. Click on Analysis Tool Pack and click OK. Go to the Data tab. Data Analysis Tool Pack has appeared under Analysis. Go ahead and click on that. We want descriptive statistics. So from these options, go ahead and click on descriptive statistics and click OK. Another window will appear. Input range. We need to specify the data. Go ahead and click on this icon and select the data which you want to analyze. So, so I'm going to go ahead and click on age. SAT score, height, and newspaper readership. And I'm going to select the entire data. Click on this icon again. I know that my data is grouped by columns, so I'm going to let it be. We also know that labels appear in the first row of this table, so I'm going to check this box. I want my output to appear in another sheet, so I'm going to let it be new worksheet and I'm going to click on Summary Statistics. And now let's click OK. Here, Descriptive Statistics have appeared. So let me just format it a bit. Let's just get rid of these extra columns that are there because we don't need them. And then we can try to decipher the meaning of these statistics. Here we have our Descriptive Statistics. From this, we can tell that the average student in the sample is 25.2 years old, has a SAD score of 1,848.9, an average student is 66.4 inches tall, and reads newspaper 4.9 times a week. This is evident from the mean value of each of these variables. It is the most common indicator of central tendency of a variable. 
The standard error indicates how close the sample mean is from the true population mean. The average age of 22.5 years is just an estimate of the sample of students, but it can vary had you used a different set of students. The standard error is calculated by dividing the standard deviation of the population or the sample by the square root of the total number of observations. The standard error can be used to roughly define a range of certainty for the mean. Just to elaborate on standard error, let's use age as an example. So mean minus st standard error times the z-score. So in this case, it would be 25.2 minus 1.3 times 2 would equal to 22.7. That would be our lower range. Our upper range would be 25.2 plus 1.3 times 2, which would equal to 27.7. So we can say that we are 95% certain that the average age is between 22.7 and 27.7 years. Standard deviation. Standard deviation is the square root of the variance. It indicates how close the data is to the mean. Assuming a normal distribution, 68% of the values are within one standard deviation from the mean. 95% are within two standard deviation and 99% within three standard deviation. Standard deviation is a widely used measurement of variability or diversity used in statistics and probability theory. It shows how much variation or dispersion there is from the average. A low standard deviation indicates that the data points tend to be very close to the mean, whereas high standard deviation indicates that the data is spread out over a large range of values. A useful property of standard deviation is that, unlike variance, it is expressed in the same units as the data. Coming to sample variance, it measures the dispersion of the data from the mean. Higher variance means more dispersion from the mean. In this case, sample variance is relatively high for the variables age, SAT score, and height. Kurtosis. Kurtosis measures the peak of the distribution. It is also an indicator of normality. Positive kurtosis indicates too few cases in the tails of a tall distribution. Negative kurtosis indicates too many cases in the tails or a flat distribution. The range of normality should go, in general, from plus 2 to minus 2. A normal distribution has a kurtosis of 0. Now finally, let's look at skewness. Skewness measures the asymmetry of the data. When in an otherwise normal curve, one of the tails is longer than the other. It is a rough test for normality in the data. Qualitatively, a negative skew indicates that the tail on the left side of the probability is longer than the right side and the bulk of the values lie to the right side of the mean. In this case, the median and the mode are higher than the mean. A positive skewness indicates that the tail on the right side is longer than that on the left side and bulk of the values lie to the left side of the mean. In this case, the median and the mode are lower than the mean. A zero value indicates that the values are relatively evenly distributed on both sides of the mean, typically but not necessarily implying a symmetric distribution. Newspaper readership is negatively skewed. Hope this was useful. This video was brought, brought to you by CXO Learning Academy, a premier learning initiative by CXO Math. For any queries, you can email us at learning at cxomap.com. Thank you.